everybody, Cone Dodger here once again, and we are back in automation. We are starting a new mini series today along the same lines of the engine recreation mini series I did many months ago now. Uh, that was that was pretty long winded and successful. There's still so many engines I could go through and and do recreations on, but uh, I kind of kind of burnt out on that aspect of it. And there's more to do in the game now, so it seems a little a little redundant to be just sticking with that. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do now is I want to start doing a little bit more of creative building once again and uh, designing my own cars and whatnot. But while ago, I did a very short series on. Oops, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> I did a very short series on uh, starting my own car company based off of the name Vector Automotive. Well, some updates to the game came out right after that, which kind of cut that short. Uh, but at the moment, we're kind of in a little bit of a lull in development on the game. Well, not in development, but in in updates being released for the game. So I feel as though now is as good a time as any to bring that back, but with a little bit of a twist. Uh, previously, I was just kind of designing cars willy-nilly. <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't directly comparing them to anything. I was just kind of making them era-specific. Uh, this time we have a very distinct and direct goal. Every every car I make is going to be competing against a car of the same year. So we're starting a company in 1990 and we are going to try and build a car in every category we can possibly build a car in with the available platforms we have and make it better than a popular car from that year. So a large percentage of what I've done in automation has been sports car builds, supercar builds, exotic stuff like that. Uh, this is going to kind of take me out of that comfort zone and I'm going to start with the least exotic car of all time, the 1990 Toyota Camry. So to make this series work and to use all of the available tools we have in automation now, uh, what I'm going to do is start off the episode with a recreation. So I will be doing a new platform. And this is a monocoque chassis. Steel, it is transverse setup. McPherson strut. And a uh, rear is kind of a semi trailing arm setup. That is, that is as close as uh, I think I'm going to get for that. And steel bodied. Uh, we'll do corrosion resistant on both of those as well. Uh, by the time 1990 came around, Toyota had finally finally figured out that, oh hey, uh, we should be putting corrosive resistant steel in these cars because they rust out like crazy. Uh, ask me how I know my 1985 Toyota MR2 is the perfect <laughs> example of how early Japanese cars rusted. Um, okay, so that's all of that. Body shell wise, I guess it's time to spill the beans. I am going to start off with a competitor for the 1990 Toyota Camry. Um, which is a four door. It's a regular sedan. This is basically. Now, the 90 is the last of this model year's run. 91 would be the first year of the, of the 90s Camry that carried it through, I guess, to like 97 or so. And that was probably one of Toyota's most successful cars. Uh, so we're a little bit lucky there that we're not competing against that one. But the, the 80s to 90 Camry were also uh, very successful cars in their category. Wheelbase on this is 102 inches. Okay, so this one is 111 inches. I think that may be as close as we can get. Uh, those are all sedans. This one's 104. Uh, it's a little bit more of a modern body, but I guess it would work. Maybe we can change it up a little bit uh, to make it look a little bit more 90s-ish, Camry-ish. Uh, if we really flatten out the nose and tuck it in. Yeah, square it off like that. And square off the back window. Can we bring the back in. Oh, the trunk's actually really long. Uh, it's got those Kind of big bumpers to it. Yeah, there we go. That's not too bad. That looks somewhat 
camera ish. Let's push the nose, uh, the windshield up as well. Uh, real squared off. Now the visual doesn't matter at all, basically. Uh, it has nothing to do with with the test uh, or the challenge that I'm going for here. So as far as the analog cars go, which is what this is, I'm building the analog first, the 1992 out of Camry. Uh, I'm not going to spend hardly any time at all on the visual visual part of it. I'm just going to give it everything it needs to run, basically. Alrighty, that looks sufficient. That is our body shell for the 19... not 1880. Not 1880, 1990 Toyota. Camry. Uh, we'll say bay. No, we'll, s we'll name this the analog, so that we know, um, remember what this car was for. Or I remember what I built this car for. I did pick the year. Yes. Okay, that is all saved. Uh, let me select that one and make a new model. It is transverse front wheel drive. We're gonna build an engine real quick, and it's going to be an inline four. So this car came with the 3SFE, which is a four-cylinder, pretty commonly used Toyota engine. Uh, it is 86 by 86, so it's as if the game knew exactly what we were going to build. And let's see, all of this is just cast. This is no high-performance engine whatsoever. Uh, it is fairly modern tech for 1990, which I do need to select. And uh, it does have an aluminum head, so it's cast iron block aluminum head, as many, many engines of this era are. Uh, compression ratio is 9.8 to 1. I swear this is the engine they used like for the default values. <laughs> Alright, uh, cam profile 40, we'll leave that. And um, styling wise... And actually, probably leaving it regular plain steel or stamped aluminum is the way to go. Uh, it is NA. It is fuel injected with single point EFI. Uh, it may have had multi point, but uh, 1990, we don't have such options to choose from. Uh, I'm wrecking my brain. Okay, so a quick little bit of research shows that it did indeed have multi-point, so I'm going to step the year up till 92, uh, just for the sake of getting the multi-point EFI on there, just to be fair. Um, regular unloaded, give it a base 13, we'll keep that the same. Uh, red line was 6100, I believe is what I read. Uh, that may be a little higher than it needs to be, but we'll see. Uh, just have a regular short cast kind of header and a three-way cat and we'll say reverse flow in a straight through because it's pretty quiet um we need to make we need to make 113 horsepower so we don't really need that much exhaust pipe uh let's go for the engine three quarter just so we have some leeway and let's see if we do indeed make 113 horsepower at 5600 RPM and 119 foot-pounds torque at 4400. Wow, such power. Listen to it scream. Oh no, we overshot. We made too much power. Uh, if that's possible. Possible to say that you made too much power, 122 horsepower. Uh, engine is knocking, so I do need to take some timing out of it anyway. Quick test here. Uh, now we're making way too much power. Jeez, what a powerhouse this thing is. <laughs> um, we'll make it even quieter. Alright, we'll say this is good enough. 113 horsepower at 6100, so coming on a little bit later, but look at the top here. Super flat power curve at the top, so 113 horsepower, probably making 110 at uh, 5,000. So, no big loss there. A little bit more torque than, uh, than what we showed, but nothing too dramatic. And this is the 3S, no, 3SFE. Save that guy so we can choose it. There we go. And manual is a single standard clutch with five speeds and we'll gear it pretty long 
just for the sake of having a good overdrive. Uh, estimated top speed of 132. Seems slightly unlikely, but <laughs> not impossible. But yeah, we will gear it for economy. It would, of course, be actually speed limited, much lower than this, and I bet you it would be drag limited even lower. Um, so that's okay. Let's see, we'll give it we'll give it a hard long life compound on 14 inch rims with 185s. That's all we need there. Brakes are super simple. One pistons and pretty tiny disc brakes all the way around. I did select 14 inches, right? Yes. Okay, aerodynamics, it is none. No, 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 none. It is a five seating car, so you have three seats in the back there. Uh, if you want to call that middle seat a seat. Uh, we'll say the interior is standard, and sound insulation will use that to tune our weight. It has standard 80s to, 90, 80s to early 90s style uh, entertainment. And it didn't have power steering, no traction control, or ABS, or anything like that just yet. Uh, safety wise, I'm actually going to give this one a premium. Toyota and in general Asian manufacturers took their safety very serious uh, for the era. Suspension, yeah these bland boring settings are probably perfect. <laughs> uh, let's see, I just want to check the weight real quick. 2581, so we're, we're actually light. I'm showing 2690. We'll give it. Uh, we'll give it premium, premium entertainment, not luxury, but uh, premium. That brings us up to 2631. So we're getting there. Give it more insulation. All right, 2691. That sounds good. And let's go ahead and save this. We'll hold off on looking at the stats and everything for later. Let's go ahead and start building our competition. That is. Uh, it's going to be a little, there's going to be some stipulations involved in it, so uh, it's important for me not to look at the detail stats or the test track or anything like that just yet. Okay, so going back, now I've got to make my own... Alrighty, so now I've got to make my own competitor. So basically how I'm going to do this is, I'm going to go back to 1990, and I'm going to set this up as a virtual tycoon type of environment uh, which means that the decisions I make are only allowed to make two so as if as if I'm only allowed to have one prototype and then I can make changes and then that's my production model uh, so that's how I'm limiting myself in in not being able to just go crazy and basically spec it out to try and compete with the, the Camry that I have as an analog. Um, this company is a start out. This is our first year. Odds are <laughs> we're not going to be the best manufacturer there is the first year. So when 1991 rolls around, these models that I build, I'll be able to refine them and hopefully beat the other manufacturers next year. So I'm gonna go with the same kind of setup as the cannery. We uh, we sent people over to watch what they were doing and examine their cars. Obviously, the cannery has been out for a while, so we know exactly what it what it looks like and uh, all the pieces they use. Uh, so I'm not gonna. I don't think I want to go and and change anything up too dramatically right now. Uh, body shell wise, I'm gonna use the same body shell. That might not always be the case, but in this case it is because of the wheelbase. Uh, it works out perfectly. Make it a uh, yeah. Let's make it chrome. That'll be a that'll be a great selling feature. Um, let's see. Early '90s is when we really went to boring colors. Uh, for whatever reason, boring colors took over. So we'll have it a nice off-white. Boring. Uh, now I will fixture this guy up, and we'll skip through that because I'm way too indecisive when it comes to fixtures and stuff like that.
Okay, so I think I've pretty much uh, gotten it as I wanted it. Uh, before we unveil this great design, I kind of want to bring something up that I saw on the automation forum. Somebody started a thread about, say you were starting a car company in automation, what car company would you, like, uh, idealize? What, what car company would you mirror? Or, you know, try and form your company around? And, uh, I gave it some thought and I, th I, I know this is going to be like the least surprising answer of all time. Uh, but I really do have a lot of respect for and would like to kind of build my car company around early 90s Nissan. Um, and that kind of has to do with the fact that every car they built in the early 90s are really basically from late 80s through the mid 90s. Uh, they really kind of tried to put a little bit of sports car in everything that they made. And that's kind of the same philosophy I want to have. Even my boring family sedan Toyota Camry competitor, I want it to have a little bit of sports car flair in it. And uh, I've done that with a very aerodynamic, sleek looking design that is not earth shattering. I don't want to, um, I don't want to display like, I think actually adjust these headlights a little bit. Uh, I don't want it to be strange looking. I don't want it to be exotic looking. I don't I don't want to offend people with the looks of the car, but I want it to be a little bit sporty looking. And this is the early 90s. This is when we started to really kind of focus on aerodynamics. Uh, so the sleek look makes it look aerodynamic, even though we probably didn't even put this car in the wind tunnel and we have no idea what its CD is. <laughs> um, at least it at least looks like it's aerodynamic. So that's that's how I kind of uh, based my design for this car. Now, the back's pretty pretty contemporary looking, nothing too fascinating there. Uh, but the front, it's a little bit actually Saturn inspired. Saturn kind of went with this slopey look. And I think they kind of had that same kind of feeling of, well, if we make it look really aerodynamic, people are going to think that it's really aerodynamic. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is our vector. Oh crap, I didn't even think about a name. Alrighty, I've, I've got a name. This is the hardest part for me. Trust me, this is this is what I put most of my thought into. Uh, naming of the vehicles. So, uh, I want this car to have kind of a feeling of, of trustworthiness, of reliability. So, we are going to call it the... We're going to call it the Vector Seguro. Which uh, basically means like uh, reliability or insurance in Spanish. Why would I pick such a weird name? All right. Well, basically, here's how I how I came up with this name. I went to Google and I looked up synonyms for reliable, and I didn't like any of those, so I looked up the Spanish translation for it, and that's what I came up with. So there you go. There's the the whole history, the heritage of this namesake. All right, so we got that taken care of, and now it is time to uh, actually build our model, which hopefully is somewhere in here. There it is. So, new model. Uh, we're going to go with front-wheel drive. We're not going to go crazy with all-wheel drive or anything like that just yet. All right, so this is where that whole two-attempt thing is really going to come into play. Uh, basically, I'm going to give myself one prototype, and then that's going to be... That's going to be it for the prototyping, and we have to make any changes we think we need to make, and that engine will be our final design. So, uh, a little bit of a little bit of added pressure. So, with that, I am going to once again not stray away too far into the into the crazy high tech category or try and do anything crazy and different. Uh, you might think you're starting a brand new company. You might want to try and be. Try and be very different, but uh, we'll save that for maybe some other models. We need our we need our bread and butter car, and that's what we're starting with. Uh, now the Camry had that two-liter engine. I feel as though we don't maybe need that much displacement, so I'm going to destroke it. We'll keep that same 86 millimeter bore, but I'm going to go down to maybe an 82, which would give us what like a uh, 1.9 liter. Yeah, 1.1 or 1900 cc. So a little bit more of a destroked engine. Same kind of bottom end cheapness <laughs> all the way across the board. Now Toyota put a dual overhead cam 
uh, set up in theirs, I'm going to try and save a little bit of money and retain performance by doing a 3 valve per cylinder single overhead cam. Uh, because being cheaper is good. Uh, if you can get away with it and retain your performance. I'm going to do the same cast iron on the head setup. I'll even run the same 9.8 compression. Go down to about a 30 in the cam profile. Uh, no VVT or VVL. Uh, now we only have this valve cover to choose from because we're single overhead cams, so we'll make it a nice bright white. Naturally aspirated, like I said, let's not go too crazy. Injection, uh, single point EFI is all I have to choose from for 1990. I was more willing to go <laughs> and bump the year up for the for the Camry because Toyota is an established company. They have the the cutting edge technology. We're a new company. We haven't quite researched that uh, whole multi-point EFI setup just yet, so we'll do the best we can with our single point setup. I'm running on regular unleaded. Go that I need to richen it up quite a bit and pull some timing. And we'll say just a 6,000 RPM limit. That would be more than enough. Do short cast and that 175 is fine. Three-way cat. Reverse flow and straight through. Alright, so... So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the biggest danger in this is running into knock, uh, because that's going to make me have to swing way the other way and possibly miss out on getting all the performance we can. So I take that timing down even a little bit more, and let's see, let's run 12.8 just to be safe. All right, here's test number one. Remember, the other one, the Toyota engine made 113 horsepower. Alright, so it looks like we're really suffering without that EFI, that's for sure. Only 81 horsepower. I would expect a little bit more than that. And uh, that's probably why, despite despite all of my changes, we are still running into knock. 87.2. That is quite a bit. It's quite a bit. Uh, I did put... yes, okay. Um, now the cam profile has something to do with that, I bet. So let's go up to a 35. I am going to back off on the compression as well. So now this is what I mean. Now now I'm kind of trapped. I can't really refine this and get more out of it because I've got to back off to try and get uh, try and get it to stop knocking. Uh, it would be a complete disaster if I didn't get it to stop knocking now because this is the engine that we have to use. So I'm going to have to go all the way down to a 9.0 just to be safe. Pretty much, unless I see anything else I can change, which, not really. Everything else seems to be pretty much normal. Alright, well, here goes nothing. Looks a little better. I'm gonna hit 100? Probably not. Oh, I'm really nervous about it hitting knock, though. That's what I'm most concerned about. Uh, okay, good. No knock. So we're safe there. Uh, but as I mentioned, as I mentioned, we cannot now refine this engine. We could have, if we had hit the octane correctly the first time, uh, I could have gotten it closer and gotten all of the potential out of it. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait for next model year to work on that. Um, that is uh, that is it for our engine. We have saved it, so we need to go back and right, so we'll select it, choose it, and manual. I'm gonna copy them. I'm gonna go over to five speed, put a little put a little bit of money into that, and we'll give it the same kind of long spacing. You can see our top speed is definitely a little bit lower. But I'm gonna try and not go maybe as crazy with the overdrive, retain some performance. Uh, wheels, I'll go the same same route here. The 185s, but I'm gonna go go ahead and put I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of a smaller tire on there. Uh, be a little bit sportier in that regard. But brakes, pretty much the same. One pistons with just little tiny rotors in there. But we do. Oops, I didn't want to do that. 
Well, we do have um, discs all the way around, uh, mostly because that's the only choice we have, but I would probably be trying to save money there. Um, so that, that'll be fine. Aerodynamics, nothing to choose from. Interior, I'm going to go ahead and try and get five people in this car as well. And standard interior, let's let's not make this our our uh, premium car. People just want their own, your everyday car. You don't need your premium interior. Entertainment, we'll do a standard, you know, your your standard cassette player basically is all you're going to get in your entertainment in a 1990s vehicle. And power steering, and standard safety as well. I'm not trying to not trying to break any boundaries yet. I'm trying to get this thing to be a little bit lighter than the Camry and maybe a little cheaper. Uh, Suspension-wise, once again, not going to do anything too crazy. Just drop it down a little. Okay, so now is where I have to do some trick video editing and such to see how we compete. Alrighty, so to begin with, I've got the Camry up here and I've got the uh, the Vector Sekiro on the other screen, and uh, I'm going to do a little comparison just on the main stats here. Uh, we've got power 113 on the Camry, 97 on ours, uh, but on weight, 2690 on the Camry, and we came in at 2530, so there's some improvement there. 55.5 uh, five front and 55.3 front for ours, so pretty much the same. Top speed on the Camry, 129.6. That's pretty high. Uh, 120.7 on ours, which is acceptable. 0 to 60, ouch, we got crushed. 10.3, <laughs> which is massively slow on the Camry, and 11.2 on ours, which is even more massively slow. Uh, quarter mile, 17.4 for the Camry, 17.9 for us. Yeek. Uh, braking, braking virtually the same, 49.3 to 49.4. Uh, G's, 0.85 on the Camry, but we actually bested them. Woohoo! 0.87. Uh, economy, oof, we got we got trumped there, uh, probably due to um, the EFI setup. 27 on the Camry, 23 on ours. All right, so now if we look at the detailed stats, let me pull up the other one on the other screen. All right, so let's look at this, my category, tameness. I would assume they will both be pretty much the same. Uh, the camera is actually a little less tame, 35.1 to the 35.5 on the on the Vector. Uh, so we have a little bit more of a tame car, a little easier to drive every day. Sportiness, exactly the same, 4.5, 4.5, so we didn't lose anything there. Uh, comfort, we lost out a little bit on comfort. 33 on the Camry, 28.7 on ours. Uh, prestige, Camry also beat us a little bit. 15.5 to a 13.3. And the biggest thing we got trumped on was safety. So 34.2 on safety to a 23.4. Alright, so if we add that all up, that is 118.4 total for the Camry, 105.4 for the Seguro. So, we missed our mark a little bit, but not too bad for our first ever car. And uh, hopefully in the next model year we can improve on that. But, before we can do that, we've got some other cars to make. So, that's how this is going to work. I'm going to work on our entire 1990 model lineup. And uh, do a similar type of theme where I compare versus another car of the era. And uh, we'll do this kind of mock comparison. It's obviously nothing is is complete here. Uh, nothing. This is not the actual Tycoon aspect of the game. I'm just kind of using the tools available to us now to make my own type of game. <laughs> and uh, it's all just for fun. So if you enjoy the concept, if you like the series, let me know. Uh, if you think you would have bought my Vector Seguero over your Toyota Camry, uh, let me know that as well. So I think that's going to do it here for the debut episode of this new mini-series. I uh, hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, the... the, the, the...